I'm the narrowband channel, okay? I do majority of my imaging is done narrowband. And there's this kind of revolution that's been going on, which I haven't dived into yet. And it's these uh, dual band, narrow band filters. And that's what this is here. SV Boney has sent me a new filter they've got. And this, this isn't even on their website or anything. It's, it's completely, I think I might be the first person in the USA to get my hands on this filter. Where's a knife? So yeah, I'm kind of interested to see what this guy is. And, oh, nice. They sent me the two inch, which is perfect because I have, I have this guy here. This is what I, I really wanted to test it with. And, and, I, and when they told me they were sending me this, I was like, oh crap, how am I gonna convert this to a one and a quarter filter? But they sent me a two inch, which is great. So yeah, this is a IMX 269 one shot color camera. And it has the exact same sensor as the Pen F, the Olympus Pen F. So I'm actually gonna try it with both of these cameras. But it, essentially, what these dual narrowband imaging filters do is it's a narrowband filter, but instead of just passing one specific band of light like we normally do and we capture with a, a, a mono camera, this will actually pass two little sections in the rainbow. And, and most astronomical objects that are in the sky okay if, if you take the light and you spread it out with a prism like you see the rainbow and everything almost all of the rainbow won't actually be there okay you'll just have these tiny little strips in the rainbow that will show up and what those are is those are what we call emission zones because most of the stuff that is glowing in space is a chemical reaction and it emits an extremely, extremely exact and precise sliver of light. And we can use narrowband filters essentially to just pass only that light. And what that means is that even though, like this filter, if you look at the front and the back of it, okay, it's reflective, like a mirror. It's bouncing off 99% of the light, it's, it's rejecting it. But because it's allowing through only those tiny little slivers of light, we're basically not going to see any difference in the brightness of the actual nebulosity in the sky. Narrowband filters, you think of it this way, okay? Narrowband imaging, it's not that you have to take longer exposures. You don't, really. You, you capture the same amount of nebulosity with a, with a narrowband filter as you do with a one-shot color. It's just that we can now capture longer exposures because these things reject like virtually all light pollution. And a six nanometer filter like this guy, it's gonna reject like something in the area of close to like 90% of light pollution, which is, which is massive. Okay. You know, it's like, that's like going to a very, very dark sky site. You know, that would be like, normally you're shooting, let's like, say a Bortle 7 or Bortle 8 zone, and it's like going to a Bortle 2 zone and imaging with a filter like this. And you could do this anywhere and in the city. Oh, and another cool thing, you know, like right now, it's actually a 98% moon outside. It's so bright, I can read a newspaper out there right now. But with a filter like this, you can shoot right through that. It doesn't matter what phase the moon is in. If it's a clear night, and the sky is steady and it's clear, go image with one of these. So that's what's really cool about this. And, and at first I was a little bit averse to these types of filters. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how I like this. I mean, I have a mono camera, so that's probably still gonna be king in my imaging train. But these things are awesome because it kind of introduces, to, it allows people who are just kind of getting into this hobby and maybe are a little bit scared with the idea of using a mono camera to try to create a color image. And when this product is actually released, I can assure you that you're not going to get it in packaging that looks like this. You know, this is this is obviously pre-production. So there we go. And good grief, this thing is sending reflections everywhere because it's it's a nice, nice looking filter. This guy right here, this is the focal reducer for the SV Boney 102. It's the 0.8X focal field reducer, focal flattener. Bleh. But yeah, it's going to screw on to the front because this focal reducer is essentially a lens barrel and then that will go into the scope. We're two days later right now. 
the night I was putting this together, I could not for the life of me find one of the adopter rings I needed for this camera, so I couldn't shoot that night. And then it's it's rained for two nights since. But tonight I have a clear night, but I still wanna get this video out there and kind of just prep you guys with, this is a bit of an unboxing video. I'm kind of giving my initial impressions of this dual band narrow band filter from SV Boney. Of course, it's going to produce an HOO image. That's what narrowband mono camera guys are, are used to thinking of it as. But it comes out of a one-shot color camera. And this is kind of great because those of you who maybe want to step into narrowband imaging, this is a great way to start. It, it kind of does it all in one shot for you. It's not really too much simpler, but it might help you kind of overcome the fear of that because you're still using the same color camera so if you want to go back to rgb imaging which i really can't think of any reason why you'd ever want to go back to rgb imaging once you've done narrowband yeah you can do it okay so you you have your uh, your scapegoat so to speak got it all set up here and everything and yes i am using a non-zwo camera with an asi air pro and um, we're also going to give it a try with this olympus pen f because like i said they're both the same sensor and it can be kind of an interesting side-by-side -side test. Now, some specs about this filter that SV Pony is coming out with. Of course, I got a two-inch version. I'm sure they're gonna come out with a one and a quarter inch version, but you know, don't quote me on that. And it has a nice thin bezel to the filter, which I like. I don't like thin be thick bezels. Okay, thick bezels were kind of an old old thing back in the visual days and you wanted a thick bezel because it made it easy to screw it into things like eyepieces and so forth. With imaging, you basically put it in one time and then that's it. And you want a thin bezel because that reduces any chance of vignetting that you might have, especially with faster scopes. Now, talking to speed, this is a six and a half nanometer filter. So really just about any speed scope that you have this thing should work with them. When you start getting into the really narrow filters, like the five nanometers and the four nanometers, then you have to get a filter that is specifically designed for the speed of your scope. Now, I'm shooting f5.6, but I do have some other equipment around here that's f4.5, and I've even got another one that's f2, actually. Although I'll probably use it f2.8. And for that particular one, if I had a really narrow filter here, I would have to use a shifted narrow band filter, but this is six and a half nanometers. It's, it's really a nice nanometer band pass width because it's gonna give you excellent light re pollution reduction. At the same time, it's not gonna complicate things and you don't have to worry about your optics matching the filter because it should be pretty, pretty universal. That's kind of a little bit about this filter. Uh, look for more information out there about it soon. And yes, I will do more videos about this as I kind of start diving into it, processing images this way, because this is something new for me.